Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Alright folks, so it's early morning, we're getting ready to head offshore. The idea for today is we're gonna head offshore and do some trolling. We're gonna go over the basics and the tactics, show you how to find fish. We're gonna go over several different methods of trolling. We're gonna go over what trolling really is, which is the pursuit of actively hunting fish. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. I want you to really understand what trolling is and how it is done properly, how speed is key, lure selection, and a few other things that will make it so that you can get into the bite and catch more fish. All right, folks, it is a beautiful morning. Got a slight south-southwest breeze. We're getting ready to do this. So you know what that means. We'll see you out on the water. All right, folks, so we've headed out of Boca this morning. Like I said, we're going over the fundamentals of trolling. We're gonna do a couple of different types of trolling and tactics, and hopefully we get into the bite with it. But more importantly is to explain that trolling isn't just a set style. There's a couple of different things. And there's also different ways to go about your approach into looking for where fish might be congregated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out over the deep ledge of the second reef here off Boca Raton. We're currently in about 120 feet of water, a little bit more. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with some planer trolling. So to do planer trolling, you need gear like this, kind of hefty gear. You need to be able to tighten your drag because planer puts a lot of stress and strain on your drag plate and it will continuously pull out line if you don't have a gear that will tighten down enough on it and hold it in place. What this is, is this is a Penn International 30, spooled with 80 pound braid. I have a 300 pound swivel on it and it's on a seven foot custom chaos rod with all roller guides. To do planer trolling, you're gonna need a planer. This is a number six planer. You're gonna need a leader, a monofilament leader, especially if you're trolling with braid. You need a leader that's at least 75 feet long. Mine is 100 feet of 60 pound monofilament. And then more often than not, I like to use a strip bait lure tipped with a Bonita strip to get it going. What this is, is this is a purple and blue iridescent sea witch, and it covers a mini Billy Bait Turbo Slammer that I've kind of custom modified, taking out all the color, and I call it the crystal color. To get into planer trolling, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hook our 300 pound swivel from our main line onto the ring that is on the arm of the planer. You wanna use swivels with coast lock. Snap swivels pop out under a lot of strain. I tend to avoid them. The next thing we'll do is we're gonna take our leader. We're gonna hook one end of it to the plate of the planer. And what this does is this makes it so that when you're trolling, the fish hits, it pulls it up, and your planer will rise to the surface. And the next part of the process is we're gonna take our lure and we're gonna hook it onto the other end of our leader. Another coast lock snap swivel, good to go. We're gonna take a Bonita strip, my favorite bait for strip bait lures, and we're simply going to feed it onto our double 5-0 tandem hook setup. To do this, it's simple. You find where your trailer hook is going to go. You're going to send that through the meat side. Always go through the meat side. And then your lead hook, you just puncture it through the tip of it so that it sort of trails your lure. Now we're all set up and ready to go. First thing you do when you're playing your trolling is you're going to take your lure, you're going to pitch it out, and you're going to let it wind off of your yo-yo. This all entails what's going to happen with your next step of letting out your main line. You're letting out 100 feet of leader, which means you don't need to let out two or 300 feet of main line. You need to let out enough so that your planer can get down and dive to a good depth, which is for a number six planer between 35 and 50 feet. 
feet or so. Alright, so we've let out enough line. So to get this planer set, what we've got to do, we're gonna put the boat in neutral. We're gonna let our line almost go slack so that we know our planer is diving down. So you're letting out line, you're letting your planer start to dive down. Let that nose dive down. That's what that weight of that planer is gonna do so that it sets itself. You lock up your reel and Put it in slow forward and you'll see it grab your rod will bend over like that and that's how you know your planer is set there we go put your click on you're going to tether your rod to your boat and you're up and trolling so for our first style of trolling like i said planer trolling we've got our pen international 30 the planer is set. You can tell by this parabolic bend. What will happen is once we get a fish, maybe the line will zing out, maybe not. If not, the rod will stand up from that position to a lesser position of a parabolic bend, and that will be a sign that we've got a fish on. Right at around 123 feet right now. See if we can find a targeted species, maybe a kingfish, a barracuda, bonita, maybe a mutton snapper who knows all sorts of fish hit the planers while you're trolling the reef so what we're going to do is we're going to zig and zag in between about 90 and 120 feet and we're going to be doing between six and eight knots so what this is is this is encompassing of that definition of trolling we're not giving fish time to examine our bait want them to chase it down that's what we're doing trolling is the pursuit of actively hunting fish so another thing when you're trolling the edge of the reef you got to understand what your fish finder versus your gps is showing you you see packed in contour lines that means there is a ledge you see less packed in contour lines that means the level of the seabed has leveled out yeah, you've got to understand that there's relief structure and stuff in where all of this is. Now, here is more of a ledge. Just because you don't see ledges and fish on your fish finder don't mean they're not out in the area. And that's where the whole research and discovery part of trolling the reef comes in and learning to understand the area where you're fishing. Oh, we got a fish. There we go. There we go. That's a good fish. start to the day. Nice little hook up, nice little zingy zing out on the planer. So the idea is once we get the, to the planer, we got to hand line in that 100 foot meter. It's always one of my favorite parts of planer trolling is the, the man versus fish stuff. Alright, so I'm coming up with my planer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the planer in the boat and then I'm going to hand line the fish in. You don't want to drape your leader all on your deck. That'll make a big old bird's nest. And if the fish wants to take a run, it'll take it a lot of trouble because it can get all tangled and into a bird's nest. You want to let it loop out back behind your boat. So you keep your boat slow forward and you're heading towards the ocean. That way we're not ringing the dinner bell again for the sharks.
nice first fish, solid 10 pound barracuda. All right, now let the barracuda go. Have fun, buddy. All right, folks, so that was some good fun. We trolled around the reef for a little while doing some planer trolling. Planer trolling is one of the fundamental ways to troll over the reef, especially down here in South Florida. Now we're currently sitting in about 350 feet. We're gonna switch up tactics and start doing some topwater trolling, some blind trolling, and we're gonna go over what we're doing and what we're looking for and why and the speeds and everything. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be fishing with light trolling gear. We're not fishing for marlin or giant wahoo or anything like that. We're fishing for, you know, something like tuna, maybe mahi, anything that's gonna bite. What this is, is this is a Pen 12H, an international reel. It's discontinued. If you're looking for one like it, they are now called the 12LT. It's spooled with 20 pound monofilament. It is on a seven foot star rod rated for the 15 to 30 pound class. A lot of shock absorbency in this rod. And the lure we're gonna be using is a Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer in the color pearl blue. It's on about 10 feet of 40 pound monofilament. When you're doing top water trolling offshore, and you're not pulling a planer, you wanna to try to use monofilament. Monofilament stretches like a rubber band. And all the shock absorbency between the bend of your rod and the stretch of this monofilament what it does is it helps set your hook when a fish strikes. The rod bends, the line stretches, and it yanks the hooks back into the roof of the fish's mouth, thus burying them deep. That way, when you get the fish up to the boat, he doesn't get off. The next setup that we're gonna be using is medium to heavy class spinning gear. Penn Spin Fisher 8500. On a seven foot star rod from the Paraflex series, and another rod rated for the 15 to 30 pound class. This reel is spooled with 20 pound smoke blue Mamoy monofilament, and we're gonna be using the same lure, Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer in the color pearl blue, four and a half inch lure. These are my go-to lures when we are doing top water trolling to start out with, especially when we're doing what we're gonna do called blind trolling. We're not seeing forms of life, reed lines, birds, fish jumping out of the water, anything. We've got a west wind, which is pushing everything offshore. So we're gonna give it our best shot, get up to speed and do this. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna let out what's gonna be our long line, which will be the 10, 12, 8. Now you simply just, you know, let your line drag behind the back of the boat, put your rod in free spool. So like I said, this is gonna be our long line. When you're doing top water trolling, you don't need to let out several hundred feet of line. It's counterproductive. If you got a long line, you want to let it out a max of about 200 feet. And then we'll have our other rod, which is a short rod. You let it out between, you know, 125 and 150 feet. You want your bait staggered, but you don't want them so far offset that, you know, it's not enticing impulse to feed. Fish want to see bait that are broken off from the pot. It presents an easy target. That's what they're going at. So a way to figure out how much line you've let out when you're trolling is if you're doing about five, six knots, one second equals about 10 feet of line. So if you let out for about 20 seconds or so, you're out about 200 feet. You're good to go. You lock it up, you put on your click, and you're good to go. Put the rod in the rod holder. Now, if you're on a small boat and you're trolling solo, you've got your first line set out. You want to turn towards that first line. What it will do is it will kick that line out this way. That way I can let my second line out without getting it tangled. So I'm turning towards my Initial line that I let out, my long line, once I get it almost per perpendicular to the boat, I will start letting out my second line. If you follow this basic concept, your lines will never get tangled. It's pure physics, it's mathematics, it's a triangle. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about setting your drag when you're trolling. It's really a learnt feel thing. What you do is you pull it out. You want to, to be able to pull out enough so that a fish can zing out when it hits. Yet you don't want it to be so tight that when a fish hits, it stretches and retracts and yanks the bait out of your fish's mouth. All right, 
we are up and trolling. We got the 12 inch. That's the long line set out about 200 feet. We got the 8500, both 10 reels. That's our short line. We are approaching a weed line. It's about 100 yards in front of the boat. So what we're gonna do is we are going to turn towards the north. Currently in about 450 feet of water. We're gonna give the weed line a little shot. This is a form of life. It is where life is harbored. This is what we are looking for. And if there are no fish here, we will continue our journey and our search. What I mean by forms of life is bait fish jumping, actual fish jumping, birds, weed lines. When we say forms of life, we don't literally mean it. It's a conceptual idea. It is where life is harbored, where the cycle of life continues in the ocean. And so we go and we find stuff like this. Weed lines just like this, big patches. And hopefully there's some fish lying underneath it. Little bait fish waiting for predators to come around. So you can start out blind trolling, but you typically really want to look for stuff like this as you are continuing your search, your development of your tactic for the day so that you can get into that bite, catch some fish, have a good time, and possibly bring home some dinner. And so when you find forms of life, especially weed lines, you give it a good try. If there's nothing there, you head out deeper and you find the next set. All right, so while we're trolling, I want to explain another thing about the concept of trolling and uh, being a bit risky. Truth of the matter is most folks never reach beyond one to three miles away from the inlet that they left. If you're out trolling and you're searching for pelagic fish and forms of life, you're going to have to learn to take those risks. You're going to have to let your inner explorer come out. You're going to have to head offshore to that 5, 10, 15 mile mark. The fish are out there. They're not always necessarily, you know, two miles offshore. You look for forms of life. When you hit one, you give it a try. If they're not there, you keep on keeping on. And another key factor of trolling is speed. When you're topwater trolling for pelagics, tuna, dolphin, any fish that hang out up towards the top like that, you want to do between 8 and 10 knots. You might say, hey, it looks fast. If you look behind me, you can see I'm boogieing down. I'm doing right around 9 knots right now. I'm not giving the fish a chance to come up and examine the bait. I am in pursuit of fish that are actively hunting. Trust me when I say you're not going to outrun a fish doing nine knots. There's no way. Dolphin, tuna, they swim well over 30 knots when they go to strike and hit a fish. Oh, we're hooked up. Double header. Let's do what I got. You peel out the line. Keep my boat and go forward. See what we got. Put the heat on them a little bit. See if I can get a boat to the boat. Nothing like double headers. That's what we say. You know, this is trolling at its finest. You get double headers going on. So, if you're ever doubled up on fish, the key to staying and success is to get your short line in first. Don't ever go for that long line. Let the long line stay out there. And there he goes. He's still taking off, which means we're still tight on him. Can't complain about that. As long as I keep that boat, that forward momentum, they'll turn on their side. Try to keep running just like that. Do a little bit of swimming with the boat. Feeling some head shakes, so uh, we'll see. Once we get up, we're in about 680 feet of water. I see the fish down here. He's about 20 feet down. He's coming up. I am at my leader. And it's a nice skipjack tuna, big fatty. Which more than likely means the other one skipped off. And he got off. All right, now we got the other one. We're gonna get this guy in. That's fishing for you. And he 
he's trying to put his shoulders against it, so I'm going to let him take a little bit of a run. He's doing his last hurrah, which is good. Once you're tight on a fish, you don't want to ever really rush the process. I understand the anxiety and the anxiousness to want to get the fish up to the boat, but that's what can cause mistakes. And again, as you saw, you know, the fish got off the hook right at the boat. We don't want that to happen either, so. So hey, that's good fish karma. He'll go back, he'll eat some more, he'll grow, he'll live to fight another day. But the hope is that at the same time, I want to bring home some dinner to the family. at my leader. Another solid skip jack too. Ah, there we go, tail grab, and he's in the boat. Nice, solid, ah, good eight, 10 pound skip jack tuna. There you have it. We got one on board, one of the double headers, which is great. We're going home with dinner. That's a solid eight, 10 pound skipjack tuna. All right, so that was some good old fashioned fishing fun. Headed offshore into the stream. Got a nice double header skipjack tuna strike. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue on with our trolling journey. So what we're gonna do going further is we're going to get into lighter tackle trolling with a white bucktail jig on light spinning gear currently in about just over 200 feet and we're going to head into about 55 feet of water don't be afraid to fish over the reef troll over the reef it is entirely enticing to fish especially when using a white bucktail jig you can see we've got contour lines which means our slope of our reef is coming up we're going to go over here travel over there to where the big relief structure of the reef is. We're gonna show you how that works. Where there's sharp ledges. We're gonna troll over those. See if we can get in a fight with something. So we're up and trolling. Like I said with this pro jig, it's real quick. That's one of the great things about trolling with a white bucktail jig. You've got it on a spinner, you pitch it out, you can get up and going within minutes. We've got our Penn Spin Fisher 5500 on a seven foot pen battalion rod. The class rating for this trolling setup is 12 to 20 pound class. The reel is spooled with 12 pound test. And we have a 20 pound test for a carbon leader, about 10 feet or so of it on there. So that we, uh, you know, can get that little bit of a stealthy approach. So we're gonna head over, hit the reef's edge, that first reef in between you know 50 and 70 feet we're going to show you what these ledges look like troll around them see if you can get into that fight have a little bit of fun and again we're fishing with light gear if you're ever out with the family and you know things are a little slow it's always great to troll on the reef you're not heading way offshore halfway to the bahamas or anything looking for maybe that one dolphin that might bite again light gear trolling another tactic that we're trying to employ what we're trying to do is show you that trolling has no set boundaries it can literally be done anywhere Best bet when you are reeling in a fish 
on a spinning reel is to pull back and wind on the way down. That way you're not creating more line twists because spinners naturally twist the line as it is. We got the boat in slow forward. showcasing a couple different ways to have fun trolling today nothing better than that and we are putting on a clinic great day here comes our fish ah! <laughs> you gotta love it when they take off like that they see the boat they get all agitated good fun False albacore, once you get that uh, head out of the water, they're done. There we go. I'm gonna do a tail grab. There we go. False albacore, woohoo! There we go. Shallow water trolling with the white bucktail jig, half ounce. False albacore, some of the greatest fighting fish in the world. All right, we're gonna let him go. All right, so. What we're gonna do is we're gonna toss out the white bucktail jig about one more time. See if maybe we can get into another bite, which would be great. Great day though, I mean, you know, we covered a lot of ground. We started out in the deep ledger reef, planer trolling. Got hooked up with a nice barracuda. Went out in the stream, we got a double header with some skipjack tuna. Seriously. Cannot complain about that. It, it literally doesn't get any better than double header tunas. And now to finish up, we've come over here trolling light tackle, the white bucktail jig. One of my favorite ways to troll. You know, and it just goes to show we're having a great day. You know, we haven't emptied out the ocean. We got one fish in the bucket. We're taking it home. We're gonna have a great dinner. You're not gonna catch every fish that you hook. You're gonna have to accept that. But if you're gonna have some fun, get out with the family, get out with some friends, get out with some colleagues, whomever. Trolling is the way to go. Most definitely, if you're looking to cover a lot of ground, get into that bite, learn your fishery, learn what fish you're going after, when they're around, what you're looking for that they might be around, hanging around so that you can get into that hookup. Is it legends? Is it forms of life? Is it structures like wrecks? All sorts of different things entice the impulse to feed on fish that are actively hunting. So just always bear these basic tactics in mind. I'm a firm believer that almost anything broken down to its most basic components is not that complicated. Trolling included. I said you know earlier when we hooked up you know false albacore are some of the greatest fighting fish in the world they're always swimming they never stop swimming and you know come June July here off the southeast coast of Florida they're relentless you're gonna hook them so you may as well learn to embrace them you're, uh, you know, if you're, if you're trolling for them for bait, it's one of the most effective ways to stock up on bait for the rest of the year. Light tackle fishing, catching, you know, solid 10 pound fish is always great. Can't, you know, can't deny the, the fun factor in it. If you're not used to it, if your stamina is not built up, yeah, you're going to go home sore, but you know what? You're going to go home with memories. You just persuade them with the tip of your rod and the base of it, which is where the power comes from. And you take your time and you get them up to the boat. This guy's still kind of fresh, but as I've said before, you get that head out of the water, that takes all the fight out of them. And Benita in the boat. 
Vol Salvo Corps. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed. And I hope you learned a little bit about a couple of different tactics of trolling offshore. Trolling will eventually get you into that bite as long as you keep at it and you never give up. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.